Oh, hello again and welcome to the VK6ES Fun with Amateur Radio channel. Um, I was just driving, uh, just driving around and noticed this, uh, this installation here. This is a uh, commercial medium wave radio station. So I just thought I'd stop and have a very quick look at it. And uh, it's quite an interesting arrangement. They've got, um, I don't know how tall that mast is. Um, doesn't look particularly tall, but then it could be reasonably broad. Uh, there's the fence. I'm not obviously going to not get over the fence, but um, to get any closer to it. But that might be might be over a metre on each face that uh, that mast. But it's got a a guying point halfway up it. So you've got the four guy wires, and you can see the insulators there. So the uh, the vertical mast is the radiator, and uh, there's no other guy wires on it from top to bottom. It's just guide at the middle. So it's like a little version of the what they used to call the Bloor Knox Towers in America. Where they'd have sort of two self-supporting towers that were uh, it's a bit like little Eiffel Towers, if you know what I mean. They were tapering towers. This has the same profile all the way up. And if you could imagine two self-supporting towers uh, with the bases bolted together and then so it's thin at the bottom, thin at the top, and wide at the waist, and then they'd have the four big guy wires at the waist. That's what they used to do with the Bloor Knox towers in America. Don't have those in Australia, not to my knowledge anyway. I've never seen one. Um, but this one, it's, uh, it's still got all the old poles there for where uh, it used to be fed with open wire feeders. See the poles going down to it all the way down to the transmitter, or rather to the uh, to the, uh, the matching hut there, the, uh, the ATU, or the ACU. And let's have a look, see if I can get any closer to that. It's got to be an insulator at the bottom of that. This is no, uh, there's no skirt wires going up it, so it's not it's not a unipole, folded unipole type antenna. It's um, it's going to be fed from the base there. But you can see that's uh, probably a bit of history, really, with the old open wire feeders there going all the way down. Because now there'll just be uh, coax under the ground going uh, all the way over to the um, over to the ATU there. But this gets on quite well. I've been listening to this for. Uh, uh, for a bit. I think it's only a low power transmitter, might be a couple of kilowatts, maybe five kilowatts. Most of these uh, small network AM stations have, uh, or most of these AM network stations have small transmitters. Uh, but there we go, I just thought that, uh, I just thought that looked interesting, so I'd pull over for a couple of minutes and uh, shoot a quick video. I can't quite figure out how the open wire feeder would have gone across these poles though. Got one insulator up the top there. Unless the open wire feeder went each side of that insulator, and there was uh, spaces between the two wires, maybe, maybe that's how it worked. There's a couple of wires. Oh, there's a couple of wires hanging down under the bottom of that one. But uh, yeah, can't quite uh, can't quite picture how that might have gone together. But uh, that's what these things were for, anyway. You see the whole row of them going all the way down. That's probably a bit of a probably a bit of radio history there. That'd be removed at some point, I would think. Although, having said that, they probably haven't been in use for quite some time, so if they've been left there this long, they'll probably be there as long as the mast is. <laughs> anyway, hope you found that interesting. Not amateur radio, but radio nevertheless. As always, thanks for watching. I'll uh, catch you next time.